is the final game and here we have an example how dynamic factors uh, can overwhelm static factors. Basics is a mistake. Now I wonder, um, it's not exactly clear, clear what, what Black tried to accomplish here. Was he trying to trick White or to confuse White or what? It's just a plain mistake. I mean, black clearly mistakes it in e4. That's very easy to see because after b6 d5, and now black has a hmm, very unpleasant choice, and it's it's just move number five, and he already needs to uh, make a big decision. The point is that let's say after c takes d5, we get a Benoni structure, where where black has already committed himself with b6. Of course, he can still get uh, a6b5, which is so typical of Benoni, but the point is that he will be a tempo down. And another way to justify this move would be to play bishop a6, but the problem is that in some lines that plan doesn't work. So white needs to find a plan where b6 is a mistake. So by playing the basics here, black has limited his options. Now it makes no sense to let's say go bishop g4 here, which happens so often in Benoni, simply because b6 is already there. And to justify, if you want to play bishop here, then probably the only way to justify is to play a6, rook a7, rook e7, but sometimes it doesn't work. So the point is, why does it need to find some line where this cannot work for black and basic simply uh, is limiting black's options so it's unclear why what what black tried to accomplish here so d5 e takes z this is also fine takes takes and 95 uh, this is overkill uh white is not ahead in development his queen is well uh well placed but that's the strongest piece and can be harassed by many pieces, let's say just bishop b7, knight a5 or something. So the queen will go back soon, white is not ahead in development, and he wants to, uh, he's slightly, but that's not a big deal. So he wants to actually, knight e5 is like a brutal try to punish black for playing like this. Now if black wanted to play a psychological game, then he succeeded in doing that, because knight e5 uh, perhaps this was like provoking white to to uh, go for some something concrete. Perhaps white really thought that he was better, which is not the case. So um, in any way, ninety five is a mistake. I, it's really hard to justify it. Um, let's say g three is fine or bishop g five. You know just preparing group d1 or something, that's perfectly normal, it looks sensible. But after knight e5, queen f6 takes takes. Now, why, it's on, why needs to play queen g5? He cannot allow rook d8 to happen, and it can happen very easily because it takes only one move to get it there. And there is not, he, white hasn't got a piece to, uh, to uh, which can sit on the d-file and block it. So he really needs to play, he needs, to, well, he needs to recognize that uh, black has very uh, huge attacking potential and he needs to go for this straight, which is okay, he does. But after, but black, can, uh, black will trade under his conditions. So not queen g5, but bishop b7, which is correct. Now, if white, if white wants to trade, he needs to, uh, then, he, then he will allow the opponent's bishop to, to get a very nice seat on f6, which is unfortunate for white, but there is no other way. And now, black is already better. I mean, statically speaking, he's worse, because his pawn structure is worse. But, now comes that big but, white ca simply cannot uh, take advantage of his static factors, because he's behind in development. A b2 spot is extremely... Um, hard to handle. There is no way if if rook b1, bishop f5. It's that simple. So there is no effective way to handle this pressure. And f3 makes sense because he wants to make this 
f3 e4 block against bishop f5 and eventually play rook b1 and slowly unravel but it's not going to work a5 is okay but i think it's not energetic enough i would personally play bishop e6 and long castle and the point is that here you have f5 to undermine that block now rook e8 is coming and f5 is next move and what is white going to do bishop d3 is not possible that loses a pawn and f5 cannot be stopped so if f5 will you know black is ahead of the development he won't, and the, the opponent's kick is in the center even though it's in end game uh, the same pr principles still apply black should open up the center it's that simple and yeah again static factors uh, are against black because his pawn structure is worse but what what is not in position to to make uh, anything out of it because he's just uh completely paralyzed a5 is okay a4 uh, e4 a4 rook b1 i don't like short castle this is a, an an end game why would why why would black uh move his king away from the center bishop b6 with a lo with a long castle it makes no sense because you get because of two points point number one you just you keep the king in the center point number two uh it deploys the rook it's uh, pretty much logical bishop d4 rook fb8 rook a7 rook d8 okay now b4 is a huge blunder uh, Nasser was rook d1 and white still needs to um, work to equalize but he's still worse yeah uh, but after b4 rook d7 suddenly white is just lost because not not lost but he's worse let's say b takes c which is the only move rook d1 just blunders a pawn very important pawn now there is c5 and bishop c4 threats and everything it, it's just collapsing but let's say after b takes c white, white black has a choice between rook takes and going back just keep, keeping keep, keeping his extra piece alive in the case he doesn't like that he can just play b takes c and it's still still aesthetic factors against black very bad pawn structure but bishop d3 is dead there is f5 there's there is pressure on d3 c4 and soon e4 it's like uh, it, it's like again it's it's a story uh, about a guy a million uh, who has million dollars in sahara yeah you have one million dollars but you cannot do a thing with that uh it's but when you're statically weaker you need to recognize that you just need to evaluate if your if your uh if your uh, uh if your um oh what's the word counterplay yeah if your counterplay is strong enough to balance your static weaknesses uh black played very good game after basics i don't like the move to be honest and i think it cannot be played but after that black has played pretty much a flawless game i would say no because everything makes sense you know white wants to trade okay he can but under black's conditions and now a5 i think just cast along it's more to the point just getting f5 is that simple because white has a big you know not not only b2 b2 is a problem but there is c4 problem and f5 soon to come and rook e8 it, it's it's quite dangerous for white and remember bishop d3 will never take place because there is always some of course let's say here bishop d3 cannot happen because he just loses a pawn so it's not that simple and white really needs to solve complex problems um but after a5 a4 it makes no sense to go to go to that side i mean uh, it's an end game uh so factor number one is uh, not having a big big impact so why should black uh, move his king to safety it's already safe on e8 you know just guess along get your get your pieces active um so i'm against that as well but after that i mean pretty uh, pretty much everything looks logical like rook d7 and now white is just stuck um so that's basically it of course if you have some questions uh let me know i will try to explain 
uh, I'm here to teach you guys something, right? Okay, see you around.